This is Dr. Jonathan Silverberg. I'm an assistant professor of dermatology, medical social sciences, and preventive medicine at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. Today I will be discussing the efficacy of sodium hypochlorite or bleach baths to reduce Staphylococcus aureus colonization in childhood onset moderate to severe eczema, a randomized placebo-controlled crossover trial by Dr. Hahn and colleagues. The study results appeared in the second issue of 2016 of Journal of Dermatological Treatment. Uh, the summary of study results is presented by the authors. Uh, this is a four-week, twice-weekly regimen of diluted bleach baths in children with moderate to severe atopic dermatitis. And they found that um, bleach was not more effective than water in reducing Staphylococcus aureus colonization and improving the symptoms of moderate to severe atopic dermatitis. Uh, the importance of the study, as stated by the authors, was that Staphylococcus aureus colonization and or infections uh, are important factors in the pathophysiology of atopic dermatitis. And the results of previous studies have provided conflicting results regarding the efficacy of diluted bleach baths in treating moderate to severe atopic dermatitis. This study shows that short-term use of diluted bleach baths uh, is no more beneficial in reducing Staphylococcus aureus colonization or infections uh, or improving the symptoms of moderate to severe atopic dermatitis than baths and water alone. And so when approaching the, the, uh, the methods of this study, uh, this was a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, crossover, single-center study in 40 children and adolescents between the ages of 4 and 18 years with moderate to severe atopic dermatitis. Patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to bleach uh, at the 0.005% concentration or placebo. Uh, patients and their families were instructed how to prepare the bath uh, using a bottle provided to them taking into account the bathtub size and height. Uh, patients were instructed to bathe uh, two to three times weekly for four weeks, followed by a four-week washout period, and then crossover treatment for another four weeks. Usage of emollients was kept stable and patients were asked not to use their prior medications. The primary outcome was to compare the presence of Staphylococcus aureus at the right antecubital fossa and most severely infected or eczematous lesions uh, before versus following each treatment period. The key findings as presented by the authors was that 40 patients were randomized and completed the trial, although non-adherence was noted in 14 patients. Now, non-adherence was defined as either bathing less than twice weekly or delayed follow-up after each treatment period, or the use of an oral antibiotic that might confound things. A Staphylococcus aureus colonization was found in 80% and 85% of patients in the bleach and placebo groups respectively at baseline, and reduced Staphylococcus aureus growth was observed in 25% and 28% of bleach and placebo patients respectively, and no significant effect on Staphylococcus aureus resistance was observed. There was a significantly greater reduction in the scoring atopic dermatitis or SCORAD index uh, observed with the uh, water baths alone or the placebo group uh, compared with the uh, bleach group. And bleach baths conferred no significant efficacy benefit in measures of quality of life, skin hydration, and transepidermal water loss. Bleach baths caused significantly greater reduction in topical corticosteroid use, however, and topical antibiotic use. Uh, adverse events included primarily stinging and itch, but did not really differ between the uh, different groups. And so here are my thoughts uh, and analysis of this study. Um, you know, bleach baths are um, a compound intervention. They're ones that have really been um, adopted widely um, within the, the pediatric dermatology and the dermatology community at large um, for the management of atopic dermatitis. But they're really a compound intervention, and it's important to understand what, what's included within them. So what I mean by compound intervention is that they include really several interventions bundled together. Um, one is that a water soak that may in of itself be beneficial uh, by washing away serum and uh, crust from the skin. Two, you have the use of emollients or topical corticosteroids immediately after coming out of the bath, which can act as a sealant and seal in the moisture obtained from prolonged immersion um, and also potentially augment the absorption and efficacy 
of topical treatments. And three, the, the actual addition of the bleach itself that may have its either disinfecting or anti-inflammatory properties. Now, the present study standardized the first component of the intervention and by you know, everyone doing that water bath part of it and specifically examined the third component with a direct comparison of bleach versus just placebo or water alone. Uh, it's not clear from the manuscript, however, about that second part of the intervention, whether patients applied emollients immediately after the bath or at other times, and I think that's one, one part that we could use you know, a little bit more insight into. Uh, but the results show that twice weekly water baths are a clinically effective strategy, but that the addition of bleach may not actually be needed and, and may confer no additional benefit. Um, so, you know, these results may have considerable impacts on the current state of patient management because clinicians may be able to simply recommend the use of water baths, followed by the application of emollients and or topical medicaments like topical corticosteroids without the need for bleach per se. Uh, this may be preferable from a safety and tolerability standpoint since bleach can cause stinging and burning on open erosions or fissures in the skin. And certainly bleach around the eyes would, would uh, also be uh, not a great idea because of stinging and burning. Uh, further, many patients report that bleach baths will release fumes that can be irritating to the upper airways and, and bleach has been shown previously to be a trigger of asthma. So, uh, you know, the use of just a straight water bath may actually be as effective and, and perhaps safer. Um, you know, in terms of the impact on future state of management, uh, more well done studies such as the one performed by Dr. Han are needed to provide further evidence about the benefits of adding bleach to water baths in patients with atopic dermatitis. You know, this is, this is one well done study. We need more of them to really um, put together a, a better body of evidence and understand how this, uh, you know, this treatment actually works. Um, but there are still some questions that remain unanswered. So if bleach does have some efficacy as a treatment for atopic dermatitis, what's the mechanism? Um, you know, previous studies have called into question whether or not it really is killing off the staph or coccus aureus, or if that is the true mechanism of action. Um, is the mechanism pH dependent, um, which you may get a very different pH in a bath setting um, than you would with a topical preparation, for example. Um, does bleach work by killing Staphylococcus aureus, or might it have direct anti-inflammatory effects? Uh, so further studies are certainly needed to uh, you know, better elucidate these points.